And we are indeed following breaking news here on HQ because Oral Roberts, a 15 seed, just upset two seeded Ohio State. This is the last couple seconds of the game, and there it is. It is final, Ohio State. And those final seconds had a couple of chances to make something go, and they did not. The final score there, 75-72. Give it up to Oral Roberts. That was a bracket buster in the history of the NCAA tournament. Now, prior to this, only eight times in the history of this has the 15 seed ever upset a two seed. The last was in 2016. There they are there. We'll add Oral Roberts to this list in 2021. They just did it. So now 15 seeds against two seeds. They are 9 in 132 in the history of this tournament. Let's welcome in college basketball writer Chip Patterson. Take a deep breath, everyone. Let it go. Uh, holy cow, my friend. What did we just witness? Uh, first of all, uh, 215, uh, absolute history, as you mentioned, just the ninth time that we've seen it since the bracket expanded. But I, I really love two aspects of this. First, uh, the Ohio State story, which is something that has been uh, a creeping concern throughout the season, which is their ability to stop really dominant scores. This Ohio State team has not been great defensively, and they've always relied on their offense. And then number two, the Oral Roberts side, which is a team that on the season has been terrible terrible defensively, at least in terms of their adjusted efficiency margins. But then we look at their performance here. I felt like Oral Roberts was swarming all over the place. Ohio State turned the ball over 16 times. They did not shoot it well from three. They had a hard time getting really good looks. And when you came down the stretch of regulation, because to me, I really think that if Ohio State didn't get it done in regulation, they had not played consistently enough to win it in overtime. Sort of the opposite of what you normally expect with those 215 or higher seed type matchups, but the fact that they couldn't get it done, uh, Oral Roberts just had so much momentum. The body language was good. And of course, when we get Max Abmus, the number one scoring leader in the entire country, to be able to show out for everyone, uh, this is awesome. So Oral Roberts, bad defensive team during the year, played great, uh, leading score, showed out. Ohio State, one of those reasons we were concerned about the Buckeyes in the big picture was the defense. They could not get stops. They were bad against the pick and roll. It's something that we've been waiting on all season. I don't know why we thought it was going to come here, and it ended up biting the Buckeyes in a big way. Bye-bye, Buckeyes, and Oral Roberts on to the second round. That needs to be a hashtag immediately there. Bye-bye, Buckeyes. Um, so we talked a lot about the things that Ohio State did not do right going into this game, and you mentioned the star of this game, Max A. Smith. I think everybody right now is Googling his name to see who this kid is. Talk about what Oral Roberts did right. They had a really fantastic game plan to be able to take advantage of uh, Ohio State's weakness in the pick and roll. They just weren't good with switches, and that was able to allow. Uh, also, like O'Banner had a fantastic game here. I mean, they were running that two-man game, and Ohio State didn't have any answers for it. I mean, the lack of ability to adjust when it's basically just two players that are beating you uh, is really disappointing. But again, Ohio State all season has not been fantastic. I mean, look at that, 59 of the 75 points. They were the only two players that were in double figures. Uh, and so for the Golden Eagles, fantastic game plan, taking advantage of Ohio State's weakness, lack of ability to adjust from the Buckeyes. I think that they didn't have anything even offensively because they were a little bit stunned by Oral Roberts. In the last like four minutes, I think Dwayne Washington Jr. was one of the only Ohio State players to get a good look at a field goal attempt. I mean, they just couldn't get EJ Liddell going. Uh, he had to sort of put the team on his back, came up with some good buckets in overtime. But, you know, we didn't see much from Justin Irons. We didn't see much from Justice suing. Uh, it just wasn't a great performance. The Buckeyes looked sloppy at the beginning and never could get it back. Uh, Oral Roberts brought the fight to them from the start and sort of had them uh, like a step slow to everything. It was, it was incredibly impressive uh, the way that this Oral Roberts team played above its head and never looked scared against Ohio State on their way to a historic NCAA tournament upset. You know, that's absolutely right. They look dominant this entire game from the very beginning. Um, 
I know I had Ohio State moving on. I'm not sure if you did as well. Oh, yeah. And oh yeah, I mean everybody did. I think Larry Hartstein, one of our experts, the only one had Oral Roberts covering, and that's about it. Um, entering this tournament, the round of 64. I mean, you get a 15 seed going up against a two seed, and I have to say, some people in our office had Ohio State going very far in this tournament. We see a team like Illinois earlier. They took care of business. Now, granted, that's an elite team. Is there a chance Ohio State overlooked Oral Roberts? I hope not. I think this is a continuation of just some concerning play that we saw from Ohio State. I mean, go back to, uh, they made it to the conference tournament final. And I think that they did a good job of bringing the fight to Illinois in that Big Ten conference tournament final. But remember when they blew that lead against Purdue in the conference tournament semifinals? They ended up winning in overtime, but that was just a more red flags for a Buckeyes team that lost a couple games down the stretch. And it really felt like they played their most dominant ball back in early February. Now, because they had had impressive wins and because in those games that they were losing, they, they weren't non-competitive, they were just losing, you figured that they would get things right. But, you know, it's always a big debate, you know, whether you're filling out your NCAA tournament bracket when you're trying to pick winners or whether you're just trying to do some analysis uh, for these matchups, it's always a big debate on how much you put on current form. You know, do you take the whole season, which obviously the committee uses to seed the tournament, or do you try to look at the last five, six, seven games? Games, which the committee you know, kind of ignores, at least in terms of trying to weigh it against other results. But when we're making picks, we should look for the warning signs because the warning signs were there for the Buckeyes that they were susceptible on the defensive end of the floor. And today, uh, the three-pointers that normally fall for an offense that ranks in the top 10 nationally, they didn't fall. I mean, they were just brick after brick after brick, shooting somewhere around 20% from deep. And so if Ohio State, a team that really relied on its offense, had some uh, about average defense for teams that we consider to be among the top 10 in the country, um, then, you know, they just ended up getting got. And I think that you could see the confidence was growing with Oral Roberts as the game started to wind down. And the Buckeyes were just just throwing darts blind. I mean, they were just hoping that they could get something done. An exasperated Buckeyes team that you can tell has been taking a lot of losses over the last month or so. And Oral Roberts only turned the ball over a handful of times in that game. Okay, Oral Roberts. Moving on, hashtag, made the hashtag by Chip Patterson here. Bye-bye, Buckeyes. They're going home. Oral Roberts will now face Florida on Sunday. Florida faced Virginia Tech earlier. That game also was very close up until this game. That was the best game of the day. This one takes the cake at this point. Give me a, a small preview here of Oral Roberts going up against Florida. I think Florida did a fantastic job defensively in the second half, and that's going to be something that they're going to do is they're going to break down this film and they're going to see the way that Oral Roberts used the pick and roll to really expose Ohio State. And I'm confident that Mike White is going to be able to put together a game plan such that uh, Oral Roberts is not going to be able to ride the two-man game quite like they did, again, for 59 of 75 points. No one else on the team in double figures. I also think the Gators are going to come in with a lot of confidence. You know. Castleton had a fantastic game. Scotty Lewis stepped up. Obviously, man, with those step back three pointers, just all the onions. And I loved having Raft on the call for that, by the way, too. So I think that Florida being able to overcome a little bit of a slow start against Virginia, they didn't play great in the first half, make some adjustments, win with their defense down the stretch. I think that's a really encouraging sign for Florida, a team that we thought at halftime of its first game in the NCAA tournament might be packing their bags soon now all of a sudden might be sticking around for another week but of course do not overlook oral roberts uh, as the buckeyes can tell you hashtag bye bye buckeyes yes uh none of us can and we will all be thinking about that game and exactly who we pick if we're laying money on it all right chip patterson thanks so much for joining us here on hq to talk about this uh the first major upset of this tournament by the way check out all the games Download this app. It is the one you want on your phone. March Madness Live. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.